Um, we are from the USDA Agriculture Marketing Service, Local and Regional Foods Division. Welcome and thank you for joining our AMS resource session. We will make these slides available after the presentation, but we'll also include some direct links and additional resources for easy access. We have lots of carrots of knowledge to share, so let's dig in. I mean, can it really be a USDA presentation without a few food puns? Our agenda today, I'll provide you a little background on our local and regional foods division. Yvette will provide information about our grants and other opportunities. I'll tell you about our architectural technical assistance. Danielle will speak about the launch for regional food business centers. And Brittany will provide information on programs and support for urban agriculture. Again, if there's any questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A. If we have some time at the end, we will gladly answer some of those questions. And if we can't get to them all, we'll Um, it seems like Ron is experiencing some technical difficulties, so I'll just get started and continue the presentation. I am not able to change the slides. Kinda, I don't know if there's another presenter. No worries. Hopefully he'll be able to come back on. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Well, we won't be able to see the slides. I don't have access to it because it is on his computer, but I'll speak broadly to the local and regional foods division mission. We call it LFRD. Um, let me see actually if I can share. Give me one second, because I know he did say he was having some issues earlier on. Okay, this is. Uh... Sorry about that, everyone. Oh, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> Let me share my screen again. I have been having some challenges all day long. Um, where where was the last slide that you had seen? We were just about to move into the local and regional foods division mission. Okay. Sorry about that, everyone. All right. Is this where we left off? Is this where everybody yes. lost me? All right. Yes. So you may have noticed in the past as the marketing services division, we have a new name. It fits a little better with the, the work that we do. Um, our mission may have not changed, but our branch definitely has. We are now three branches strong. We are research, outreach and technical assistance and the regional food business centers. And our team continues to grow to meet the growing demand of the local regional food sector. Many think the local and regional food system work in the USDA is new, but its support for direct markets has been steadily building since the Farm to Consumer Direct Marketing Act of 1976. Many of you may know our programs like the Farmers Market Promotion Program, Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food, the Local Regional Food Systems Policy Advisory and Working Group, but a number of these were combined into LAMP which we are happy to say that the application process is open and it's closing on May 2nd. So please sign on to grants.gov to take a look at that. And we'll provide you a little bit more information later in the presentation about the land grants. What is our interest in promoting local and regional foods? Well, demand has increased exponentially and has definitely been even larger of an increase since the COVID pandemic. Uh, local economics and small and independent businesses like farmers markets, CSAs, food hubs, just to name a few. Lastly, our local food contributes to resiliency. I'm sure none of you really need to know any of this information. You probably know it already, but we figured we'd share it here. How does USDA define urban agriculture? Well, we do our very best to leave it as broad as possible. This allows our agencies the freedom to develop their own definitions and um, figure out who is eligible for those programs. It would also be very challenging to add all of this into one single definition. Well, I'm sure you probably wanted to give the resources, so I will pass it off to Yvette. Thank you, Ron. So yes, we're just going to go a little bit into AMS grants and opportunities. 
that are specific to local and regional food systems and can be used potentially for urban agriculture projects. Can we go to the next slide? So the Local Agriculture Market Program, which we call LAMP, is a farm bill program that has been our primary source of local food funding for grant opportunities. This program supports the development, coordination, the expansion of direct consumer marketing, local and regional food market enterprises, and value agricultural value added agricultural products. LAMP encompasses farmers market promotion program, the local food promotion program, which together we call FMLFPP, and the regional food systems partnership program, as well as the value added producers program. FMLFPP and RFSP are administered by AMS, whereas the value added producer program is administered by rural developments. So I will not be touching on that today. Next slide. Like I said, FMPP, LFPP, and RFSP are our AMS grants specific to local food systems under LAMP. In 2023, LFPP and RFSP will continue to support specific farm to institution projects. This was initiated as a part of FY22 with the American Rescue Plan Act. So we're very excited that we're continuing to serve this niche moving forward. Next slide. The Farmer's Market Promotion Program, just to get into specifics, um, is really focused on the development, coordination, and the expansion of these direct producer to consumer markets. So it's really specific on the markets themselves. So that can include CSAs, roadside stands, agritourism, and of course, farmers markets. Here we have a list of eligible entities. I'm not gonna read them all out to you, but you can see them on the slide. Next slide, please. Next, we have the local food promotion program. And similarly, it helps <laughs> local food systems but it does though so by focusing more on intermediaries. So whereas FMPP is more just the direct to consumer, LFPP is at that intermediary phase. So food hubs, aggregators, distributors, wholesalers, and processors, same eligible entities as FMPP. Next slide. Now, the Regional Food Partnerships Program is a relatively new program of ours and it's unique in the fact that it supports partnerships. So RFSP connects public and private resources to plan and develop local and regional food systems. These partners coordinate efforts to set priorities, connect resources and services to progress towards common goals. And so they're eligible entities similar to FMPP and LFPP, but you must have more than one entity. <laughs> so one entity cannot apply for RFSP. There has to be a partnership that is happening. Next slide. So just a little overview of which grant program might be right for you. FMPP is direct to consumer. There are two categories of capacity building um, and community development training and technical assistance. There is the local foods promotion program, LFPP. Like I said, it is the more intermediary focused grant. There is both planning and implementation. And then RFSP, like I said, is focused on partnerships. And all projects should so existing evidence of community support and engagement. Next slide. So like Ron said, LAMP is officially open, very exciting, happened last week. <laughs> so it is officially open and the application period ends May 2nd at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. You can check out our website for more specifics on the RFA, for eligibility details, um, and more about the grant specifics. What is new for fiscal year 23 is a new streamlined turnkey program tract which is being piloted for FMPP and LFPP. This turnkey program track, what we are calling it, is more of a simplified process 
of an application for specific project types. And you can find more about this new way of applying on our website. Next slide. Sorry, next slide, Ron, please. Oh, he might be frozen. Some issues again, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So I was just gonna mention that we have something called the LAMP Navigator. And the LAMP Navigator is this dashboard that you can use to see how many people have applied in your region um, for specific LAMP AMS grants. And it's an interactive map dashboard, could be helpful if you're interested in applying for one of these LAMP grants, or if you're just curious about where our funding has gone and the types of projects. You can also filter out by project activity types, so you can see how many have done farm to institution, how many have done marketing and promotion, um, and the dashboard will filter it out for you and show, show what you need, give you some totals. I do not have the slides, but next up, we're gonna talk about research. Like Ron said, we have our three branches. We have research branch, outreach and technical assistance branch, as well as our regional food business centers branch. One example of some research that we are doing is a cooperative research agreement with University of Maryland Eastern Shore and Florida A&M University to better understand the barriers to accessing USDA AMS grants for historically underserved communities. Um, and then understand these barriers and then work to take action to rectify these inequalities. This project is taking a community-centered bottom-up approach to the research. Year one is data collection and synthesis, and the data collection is done through a wide network of community partners across the country. And year two is using these same community partners to create outreach materials and technical assistance based on the findings of the year one data collection and synthesis. This project is underway. We are wrapping up year one as we speak. So it'll be interesting to get our findings as we move into phase two for the creation of these outreach materials. Right, Some other examples. Hello. <laughs> Sorry about all the technical difficulties, everyone. Ron, we are at the turning research into actionable learning slide, slide 19. Okay, so you, you've taken control of the slide. All right. Well, no, I do not have the slides, but I know where we are. Okay. Uh, I guess this is a prime example of challenges with uh, internet service in rural areas. There you go. <laughs> Um, I'll just get, yeah, here we are. So slide 19. So that's a lamb navigator that I mentioned, everyone. So you guys can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I put the LAMP website link and the Navigator link in the chat. Thank you so much, Kinda. And then this was the research agreement that I just talked about with the underserved communities, and we are right here. Some more research projects that we have done. An example, in 2017, we worked with the Niche Meat Processor Association Network to assess 20 years of public investment in local meat and poultry processing. And we, from that research, created a series of case studies and fact sheets that are available to the public. Another example of a research project that we did was the Promise of Urban Agriculture with Cornell University's Small Farm Program. This report explored the challenges and the circumstances required for urban agriculture to become commercially viable. The research focused on 14 commercial urban farms and evaluated factors that contributed to or hindered their successes. Next slide. Our second branch is the Outreach and Technical Assistance Branch. So in addition to being a funder of research, we also provide direct technical assistance and develop resources that reflect the needs of food system stakeholders. Next slide. And so that project that I just mentioned, the Promise of Urban Agriculture, actually has a second cooperative agreement. We received such great feedback on the first study that we published, and people said, 
these learnings really need to get out there. And so we are partnering again with the Cornell University Small Farm Program, as well as Rooted in Wisconsin, to take the learnings from the report to develop training modules for urban farmers, city planners, policymakers, nonprofits, and universities. Um, the project team has traveled across the nation to collect more stories, develop videos, story maps, and tools for an interactive set of trainings for urban agriculture stakeholders. And that should be coming out relatively soon. We are currently in the pilot phase for that project. Next slide. And so we're also a technical assistance provider. One example, like I said, the LAMP Navigator, which we discussed. We also have the Seeds of Success, which broadcast successful stories of AMS grantees, their learning so that other people can learn from their successes and challenges. We also have Wholesale Market and Facility Design, which Ron is going to discuss because he is one of our architects. Hi, I am the lead architect for our Wholesale Markets and Facility Design Program. Um, this program actually predates our um, local and regional food systems development pro or division um, with the Agriculture Marketing Act of 1946. Um, back then, we were a number of architects and engineers who uh, focused mainly on wholesale markets and terminal markets and the distribution network across the U.S. Uh, since then, um, we have merged with um, the division we are now, the Local and Regional Foods Division, and we have become a little bit broader in our scope and our outreach. So we do not really have any uh, guardrails as who who we can assist with food-related architectural design. We are a no-cost architectural design service for food-related facilities. Again, we, we started with wholesale and terminal markets, but now we reach every sector with a simple farmer's market tent setup to a 100,000 square foot or more distribution center and everywhere in between. We are strictly a architectural design service. So we do not get into any mechanical, electrical plumbing. We don't get any, into any of the engineering services, but we do provide um, programming, floor plans, elevations, sections, and even 3D renderings, which come in very handy when you are looking to attain funding. Again, we have we serve a number of different building types from farmer's market tent setups to large industrial buildings and everywhere in between. We do have a team of three architects. Um, these are a first come first serve basis. Uh, we do serve the home nation uh, with this program and our, our services generally run about two months from receipt of a technical assistance request, which we will also share along with this presentation at the end. I will pass it off to Danielle. Hi, everyone. My name is Danielle Barber, and I have the opportunity of highlighting the regional food business centers. And here at AMS, we are all excited about the regional food business centers. Um, so the Regional Food Business Center um, initiative was designed by the USDA to meet the diverse challenges um, that our food system and supply chain face during the most critical point or the most critical months of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, during this crisis, farm and food businesses across the country were impacted. Um, small and mid-sized producers and small and mid-sized farm and food businesses are often at a competitive disadvantage because they haven't had access to markets in a way that they could. And there were sectors of the country, either geographically or by race or ethnicity or for other reasons, um, that have not had access to USDA services to the, the degree that they deserved. Um, essentially, these centers are designed to provide tools to create real economic growth and um, provide equity in the food system on a regional basis. Also, we'll be announcing the awards and awards of who the regional food business centers will be awarded to sometime soon. Next slide, please. USDA recently announced about $400 million to Okay, so USDA um, has decided to dedicate $400 million for the development of these regional food business centers. It's a one-time funding 
um, with the mandate being to create a program that fixes the gaps in the food system that was affected by the pandemic. Um, at least six regional food business centers will be funded with the priority areas being the Southeast and Delta, Appalachia, the Colonious region, and there will also be um, a tribal, national tribal center. So applicants with, will propose a geographic region that reaches at least three states or territories and has a 400 mile radius. Regions don't need to be geographically continuous. For example, they can be in multiple states or territories that have similar needs or locations outside of the lower 48. Um, so the, to transform the food system, we must help small and mid-sized producers and food businesses, um, including employee-owned and cooperative businesses, access more and better markets. The regional food centers will help address this through three main responsibilities, and those responsibilities are coordination, technical assistance, and capacity building. So with coordination, it's going to act as a regional hub coordinating across a geographic area with USDA and with other regional centers. And then the technical assistance, it's going to provide technical assistance to small and mid-sized producers and food businesses in the middle of the supply chain to help them access local and regional markets, including wholesalers, um, distributors, uh, by facilitating linkages throughout the supply chain. And then the last is capacity building. And this is the piece that makes the um, Regional Food Business Center program unique because like the other USDA programs, we're coupling technical assistance and investment in a streamlined way to support businesses. Um, the centers will be able to do business builder grants um, that are up to $100,000 for programs that are unique to their particular community. So we're really excited about the regional food business centers. Next slide, please. Passing it off to Brittany. Thank you so much, Danielle. Hi, my name is Brittany Eccles, and I will be talking to you about additional resources and uh, USDA programs that support urban agriculture. Next slide, please. So this graphic shows USDA programs in the local food supply chain. The grants are in place to help farmers, ranchers, and food businesses find new opportunities in this expanding agricultural sector. Um, USDA AMS grants are uh, highlighted in orange text and span from the production stage of the food supply chain to the markets and consumer stage. And we have already discussed those local, I mean, we've already discussed those LAMP grants, um, three of them mentioned previously. Um, these are the key programs that encompass urban agricultural efforts. Um, and as you can see from the chart, there are several USDA programs and various agencies to assist you along various processes in the food supply chain. So take a look at that later on today. Um, next slide, please. So urban agriculture at a glance. This is a document that is a summary of available USDA funding opportunities for urban agriculture related projects. Here you will find all of the USDA agencies and offices with urban agriculture programs. Funding opportunities are grouped by category. So you can quickly see which program is right for you. You may be looking for ways to finance your farm, ways to market and sell your farm products, or how to protect your farm from natural disasters. This program shows funding opportunity, this publication shows funding opportunities for those instances and more. So visit usda.gov slash urban. Next slide, please. And here is, here are a few links. So you can check grants.gov for a list of currently open USDA grants. Here you will find the request for proposals and the application portal for the grants we have mentioned today. USDA programs and resources for urban agriculture can be found at usda.gov slash urban. And that was mentioned in the previous slide. There you will find grant information, list of cooperative agreements slash projects awarded, fact sheets, contact information for the urban agriculture and innovation production, and much more. Uh, this third link is showing, um, it's going to be that link for the graphic that we just saw in the previous slide. Um, so you'll be able to click actually on the different text there and it'll take you to information about those grants. 
And then we have the landing page for USDA AMS's local and regional foods division. And that was that um, next to last link on the slide. And it'll just take you to those items we've discussed earlier in the presentation and some other ones that we didn't get to discuss. So stay in touch with us. Um, as you can see, we're doing a lot to support urban farmers and local regional food systems. Uh, we know you are too. And we have a newsletter called From the Ground Up. And I just encourage you to sign up. And in this newsletter, we share about things happening at the USDA and highlights some awesome work being done outside of the USDA. So visit uh, that link, that blue link, and stay in the loop with us and subscribe. Thanks. And handing it back to you, Ron. Thank you all. Uh, sorry we don't have time for questions uh, due to my.